Hey guys, I've got a video here uh, piecing together. It's going to be a change out, but it's going to be in a modular home, a double wide, that's had an addition put on the back. And rather than just set an A coil on top of the existing electric furnace, we're going to be removing it and putting an air handler underneath the addition part and reconnecting all this trailer uh, trailer ductwork. So it should be fun. Stay tuned. And I got my seatbelt on this time. Okay, guys, we're underneath. Here is, of course, you can see the line set for the existing coil and furnace. There's the crossover duct. 12 inch duct that runs over to the other half of the home. Up in here you will have a an aluminum, or it looks aluminum, maybe it's be thin galvanized metal, ductwork system that runs the full length of each section. So when we pull this furnace out, we will be opening up the hole in the floor to uh, bring our return through. The return will come down. and go through this, it's probably like four inch thick block that they've put up after the fact, into that addition room. And then we will hang the unit on the joist on the other side of this wall. And then we'll bring supply back into this underneath the home to go pick up the two runs of ductwork. Okay, here we are under the addition on the back where we're going to actually hang the unit from the floor. It used to be deck joist. So, what I'm going to do is knock a hole through this wall. This is a 16 inch duct. This is extra room for insulation. So, I'm going to get a hole started through there before I hang this unit up because it's easier to get back here. Okay, I've drilled me a little ring of holes through the cinder block. It feels like it might be six inch block. I guess it even could be eight, but I didn't check. I figured whatever it is, I gotta go through it. I'm gonna take this chipping hammer now and start making me a hole. So now that we got a hole big enough for the return line to come through, I'm going to go ahead and work on hanging the actual air handler up so I can figure out what the supply duct will need to look like. Okay, I've trucked the unit in here and took the coil out, which the drain pan had to be flipped anyway, and took the blower out to make it lighter for me to pick it up. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to put two hangers back here against the wall on this ledger board, and I've got them spaced to where we can, one would be down here holding up basically the brew of the coil. The other will be right here holding up the blower. Okay, got the air handler hanging up. These little ISO pads under it. Quietens it down and makes it easy to get the doors on and off. Then just set it right down on the channel. Back here, we can get some light. We will, uh, build a probably about an eight inch deep box to run that return duct into the back of insulate it before i bring it over here and slip it on and then i'm getting ready to measure because it's a modular on the back side of this wall there is some fairly substantial columns of cinder block to hold the actual home up so i have to make sure i uh, miss those when I go through the foundation wall and underneath the uh, home. So I will get those measurements from the uh, end of my unit now and make sure that we don't hit any of those. Okay, I drilled a hole through the wall right there. It's 16 inches away from the uh, squared around on the unit. And I've got 48 inches from that point to this column here. Uh, that new sink drain can be modified if need be. We can uh, kick it up, bring it over, and put another 90 on it or a coupling or something. So, probably have to do that because it's going to be right in the middle of everything unless I go low. And there's a shame to do that. 
So, 48 inches. Need to go straight for three foot off the end of this, and then 90 and go through the wall. Need to stick through the wall at least four feet um, in order to uh, get past the column down here. Then we can go 12 inches out the end to the other side of the mobile home, 12 inches out the side to catch this side, and six inches out this side to uh, pick up the bathroom that's gonna be cut off from the rest of it. Okay, just got back out here. Started roughing together some duct work so I can see where to cut this hole through the foundation. So I'll get that marked and get started on that. And uh, once I get the hole cut, I'll have to actually move that drain line for a kitchen sink on the back side, but it shouldn't be too bad. I picked up some fittings. My hole marked on the wall. Uh, that column measuring four foot off that hole I drilled should be right in here, so we should clear it should be right over here so we should clear that good take my hammer drill and make another hole like we did on the other end okay there's our hole and there's our drain line we've got to do something with getting the uh, truck back put together this is the piece that goes up under the modular hole uh, it's a 16 inch we've got two reducers here to come out 12 inch on the end which will go to the far side of the hole it's already a, got a 12 inch crossover hole got a new 12 inch which will be for the near side of the hole and I've got a 6 inch which will be the bathroom on the opposite side of the furnace. The uh, duct will be cut in half while I go through the return so we'll need something to pick up that one nice room. We've got the wrap on it. We're going to take it into the cross space, put it through the hole and try to get it lined up on the mine end with the iron end. Okay, I got the main duct stuck through the hole, and I have modified the drain line to miss it. Okay, got the duct extended into the crawl space, got it wrapped, got the two six inch supplies for the new addition out here coming off of it, and got it insulated back to the unit. Uh, it's hard to get back far enough, there's one boot going through the floor, the other one is down there. So tomorrow I'll have to work on the return and the line set, basically get everything as close to being ready as I can so that when I take the old one out, hopefully I can get the uh, new system running same day. Okay, slid the old Goodman over, actually twisted it around kind of 90 degrees to get it out of the way from where the new one goes. So get in there and hook it up. Kind of a tight spot back here with this old unit still hooked up and running. But what I'm getting ready to do is braise up my line set out here. So I've got the valve core out of my liquid valve. I've got my nitrogen hooked up. In case anybody doesn't know what that is, that's a nitrogen tank. And <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, I got the uh, lines uncapped inside. So uh, the nitrogen's going in here, coming out the other end. I'll get this lower one first. And I got a wet rag around my valve. Once I get the lower one, I will uh, pull this line forward and put it in the uh, vapor valve and braise it up too. I'll move my nitrogen up to that valve. Um, I'll take out my valve cores when I do that. So right now the liquid doesn't have a valve core in it, just the nitrogen flowing through. Okay, back underneath here. Uh, I'm sorry I can't get back any further. This phone is terrible as far as a field of view. It's, I just can't get back any further. I'm against the wall. But that's the little box I built for the uh, return duct to come into. It's about four inches deep. Uh, I haven't taped the insulation here yet because I'll take these doors off uh, for two reasons. One, I'll have to make me a uh, drain knockout down here. And two, I usually pull them off when I do my brazing. Uh, slide them out of the way so I make sure I don't burn the paint any. But what I'm going to do now, I've got my flex duct stuck through the wall here. I've uh, cut the outer foil right where the insulation is seamed anyway and folded a bunch back. I took a piece of the liner off so I would have more insulation than liner. And I'm going to attach it to this 90 that I've already uh, 
sealed the uh, seams on. I will put mastic on the 90, slip the duck up over it, use the hand do it straps to uh, secure it, and probably uh, pop a screw or two in it to uh, make sure it never comes loose. Once I do that, I will try to insulate uh, the, the 90 using the same wrap as the uh, duct, and then I will seal the 90 to the unit and uh, cover up the insulation and the return will be done. Then I will uh, get my copper line set connected up in here. I'm going to put the dryer on the inside. I just didn't have room outside to work anyway. But I just wanted to make a little comment on this duck. I, I mean, I know a lot of people have pros and cons about flex. In my mind, a little bit of flex on the return is a good thing. Uh, I've seen too many systems when you have just a hard metal return. And I hate insulation on the inside too, by the way, but I've seen too many systems where you have a hard metal return that just seem to, you get a little resonance or something going on, you can kind of hear the fan. Uh, it's not so much air moving as it is just a wah 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 noise. So, uh, and also this duct is only 16 inches. This is a three and a half ton. And when you look at these charts, the static pressure is actually rated for a hundred feet of duct. So six foot of duct is much less than a hundred feet. So I think we'll be fine. I'll, I'll do static readings and I'll, I'll show you what we come up with. I expect a high static on this system just because it's a mobile home. Because usually most of your static occurs on the return side, uh, at least in the systems around here. But I really feel that's the reason a lot of this undersized duct work actually works is because uh, it's shorter pieces than all your charts. But uh, of course, a bunch of us have come out to three and a half ton units on a 50 foot piece of 14 inch flex running the whole length of the house. And it's been working 15 years, not right, but it's been working. But I'll, I'll test everything. I'll make sure I have my required airflow. And uh, if it doesn't, I'll change it. But I'm thinking it's gonna work good. Okay, I'm getting ready to sweat up the indoor coil. And I wanted to come out. This is a 13 series unit. It's probably one of the last, last ones around here. Just wanted to pull out the uh, orifice that's packaged inside the control box and make sure that it's the right one that's in the indoor coil now. Uh, there's the old good one. Like I said, I just twisted it around to get it out of the way so I could mount this unit. I didn't want to put it over in this tight corner because there's a dryer vent. So hopefully this will help some being away from it. You should just leave the disconnect up there so you don't quite need a ladder, but it's pretty high. Okay, and then indoor unit has a 76 so we should be good to go i'm going to uh i'll strap that line set to the wall using some two hole pvc electrical straps uh, so i'm going to trim this off get it fit i'll slip the uh, popping plate back over it so that i can get it down out of the way okay i'm going to pump this old unit down while we still got power to the furnace because the reversing valve is a uh, energized in cooling i will uh, i've got the liquid line shut off i'm going to hook one hose up on this old gauge set just so i can see when i'm down to uh, near zero and uh, i will uh, get this thing cut loose now the way the owner's going to cut it on i've got the disconnect pulled out the reason i'm pumping the gas down into this one is that this is actually the second place this unit's ever been it's kind of a uh, unit we took out of one place and saved and then she needed it here because her other one the compressor went bad so I will pump it down uh, cut it loose and some I'll store it somewhere and maybe another day somebody else might need it to get by for a little while here's the original furnace had to return there up here filter slip in here typical mobile home furnace wasn't room to put a larger coil in this particular unit anyway this loose connection here on this original furnace been getting pretty warm okay, carrying the old furnace down the stairs 
helper's done a great job. I gave her the uh, bottom so she can go backwards and carry all the heavy stuff. Okay, so the furnace is out. Here's what we're left with. You can see the big 12 inch crossover. It goes from this side of the house to the opposite side where you have the same duct. And that is your aluminum duct work. So what I'll be doing is cutting the duct completely in two here, uh, making a hole large enough to bring my uh, return up through here. And then I'll have to seal the duct on this side and I'll be going back into it with a, a takeoff further down to bring air into this side of the house. And back on this end, we only have one vent back there. It's for a bathroom. So I'm gonna to have to tie that section back in, which I just left a six inch stub out off of our new ductwork for that. So with that furnace adapter out, this is what we got to deal with. You see they just cut the top out of this duct and fold it up in there when they make their connections, put a little shiny tape on it. I'm not sure how airtight that is, but what I'll do is chop this duct loose on both sides. I'll seal up this end for sure. This end, I may seal up uh, or I may just try to go over to where the vent is and go plumb through the duct uh, just to eliminate it, but I'm, I'm not certain yet what I'm gonna do. I'll figure it out as I go. I was worried if I'd have enough cable to reach back over to where mine is, but it looks like they left plenty. It was just rolled up down there underneath it. So got plenty of wire left over. Okay, sticks down here underneath stuck up in the hole here where I can see this duct. This is the uh, the duct that runs the majority length of the this side of the mobile home. Again, it's that old aluminum stuff, so I was just able to cut the corners, fold it up kind of like a Christmas package. Stuck a screw through here and here, gathering all three pieces, bent the sides in, top bottom up and top down, and then just use mastic tape on it. Um, when I get to where I can, uh, after I'm, I'm going to be working here, man, I'm going to paint the whole end of that with some uh, duct mastic just to make sure the tape never comes off or anything, but should be good and sealed. Okay, we're up under the bathroom, the one I said that was getting cut off from the uh, cutting through the duct for the return line, for the return uh, duct. So uh, what we have here is the four by 10 aluminum sleeve that used to come down and go into the top of the trunk duct. I just pulled this trunk duct out. All the insulation has been cut down right here, the, the fabric, because it's under the bathroom and they've been doing some replumbing. So I'm just getting that piece of duct, it's probably 15 foot long, completely out of the equation now. And I've just took a regular standard four by 10 by six inch boot, uh, slipped it up inside, uh, screwed it and then put mastic tape on it I'm getting ready to bring the uh, uh, flex duct under I'm going to uh, paint mastic on here slip the duct up put the uh, pan do it strap on it and then I'll I'll insulate all the way up against the floor they're going to come back under here and put all this insulation in but I'll get my duct insulated separately and then we'll be working our way out and this is where the existing trunk duct to the other side ties into the end of the uh, new trunk duct. And then this is the 12 inch coming out the side of that, which I've got to run down here, part way down the uh, home and tie it back in. And in case you was ever wondering how wide the duct is in a mobile home, this is a 12 inch takeoff. It goes wall to wall, so it's 12 inches wide and about five to six inches tall. Okay, we got the last piece of 12 inch duct. Got a 90 we gotta make. And there's our takeoff we just put in. So that's our last duct connection. Then we'll be hooking up the power and turning it on. Okay, checking the electric heat, emergency heat. We got 44, 48 amps. Okay, it's on zero. There's the return only. Three, three. Supply is a point one, so we have a point four three. Okay. 
So with our book here on a 42 on medium tap, 1315 to 1395, that would be 40, that'd be 1355. 1355 is what we're actually getting right now. So, 1355. We'll jump out to the calculator, but I'd say that's 380 some uh, time. That's 387 CFM per ton, so I'm gonna leave it right there on the medium speed. I'm kind of surprised that the uh, supply static was that low, but and I'm not surprised that the return static, but it's quiet upstairs. I'll uh, see if I can get some video up there in a minute. That's good. Here's our return grill. Uh, give you some idea. I can hear that ceiling fan a lot better. But uh, if we go over here to the grill, what we've done. got our uh, return deck down there. We panned the floor where there was holes where the wires used to come through and whatnot. We had to splice our thermostat wire. It goes through the ceiling down to the thermostat over in the kitchen wall over there and uh, just no way to do anything with it short of trying to uh, run a piece of wire mold up through the uh, kitchen so we didn't want to do that. Uh, we put a ledger board here. The homeowner's actually going to take out the rest of this and build shelves above this so that uh, they have some more storage. So I actually just got a piece of cardboard on top for now until he goes get his wood. So there's our return. Yeah, ceiling fan. Yeah, a supply there in this new addition. Supply here in the new addition. And we finally got good cool air coming out, so. We're gonna let it run for a little bit and stabilize. Check our superheat. The uh, line set's exactly 15 foot, so I believe it's the uh, good test to see if they actually put enough refrigerant in it at the factory. Here's what we got so far. I uh, my my second 911M probe has gone dead on me. It won't turn on. I tried new batteries. That didn't work. So. If anybody has any ideas on what could cause that, let me know. Uh, it's actually the newer one. The first one I bought, uh, I bought them one at a time and used it for the return to market. So the uh, supply one, I actually bought sometime later and it has quit on me. But right now we're taking out 77 and a half degree air up there. Uh, Superheat's right in the middle. Again, this is close to a 15 foot line set as you uh, would expect to ever come up with. I plugged the return air numbers in as they were and moved my probe up to the my one working probe up to the supply side and it says I got an 18 degree split and a uh, 43 or what 3.7 tons it's pretty warm in the house right now and warm outside so my superheat's actually dropping lower than what they they want but uh, I hate to make any adjustments to it until the actual uh, space is at operating temperature so uh, I'll keep an eye on it and make any adjustments if we need to. So final look in here. Mine's that strap to the wall in here. I've got to go outside and put a strap on and we'll be wrapping it up. Well recovered just a touch of refrigerant. By recovered I mean put it on the recovery jug and open the high side for a spurt or two. So uh, all that's left now is pull the I manifold off. Go upstairs and get the probe. Thanks for watching.